I can't tell you how excited I am about this. Dare I say, stoked, even. Oh, f What you're looking at is a stepper motor in servo motor clothing. And I've had big plans for something like this for quite some time. Before I can get to that project, however, I'd like to wire this thing in and get it sorted before I try anything else. That's what this hopefully short video will be about. While we're here, I'd like to run an idea by you. I've done a few, two, maybe three CNC basics videos from time to time, but never about the actual hardware, the nuts and the bolts from a hobby builder's perspective. Steppers, drives, breakout boards, etc. All that stuff that happens before you ever get to CAD or CAM or G-code. I've never done any videos like that because frankly, there's quite a bit of information out there on the subject already. But if you'd like my take on it, let me know down below and I'll see what I can do to make that happen. At any rate, for now, I've got to figure out what all this junk means. I mentioned this is a stepper motor, but it's a little special. It's got built-in drive circuitry, power circuitry, step and direction, and this even has encoder output, like positional information. I won't be using the feedback for now for two reasons. First, my project doesn't need it, and second, I wouldn't have the slightest idea of even where to start. That said, in order to be able to use this, given the flexibility this motor slash driver can offer, it needs to be programmed. It needs to be told what role it will play in the project it will be built into. In order to get through that first step before I can wire anything, I need to attach this to my computer. Now, it's got like a serial connection there, a DB9 style connector, and I'll be using this DB9 slash breakout board to USB. These both have screw terminals. I've made the connections per the manual. I'm gonna plug this in here. Fine, always something. Now I can plug this end into my computer. Hopefully that does it. This stepper should now know its role in life. I can now get to wiring this and tuning it in Mach 4. Hopefully. Every time I work on this thing, I kick myself for putting the box so low to the ground. So I left this in a bit of a mess after that fourth axis video from a year or whenever ago. I really should take the time to clean it up a little bit. Anyway, I think you've seen this before. There's a smooth stepper on the right there. That's kind of driving the whole show from the PC. It's an Ethernet cable coming in. That's a SoundLogic breakout board. Campbell something. It's pretty old, but so far it's been bulletproof. And there are three Gecko stepper drivers. X, Y, and Z. Now this breakout board could handle another axis, and that's what I'm going to be tying into. So I'll have X, Y, Z, and A, and A is what will be running the new stepper. Now because that Lexium stepper has already got drive circuitry in it, it doesn't need a, another, well, gecko drive in this case. All I need is power, pulse, and direction. Okay, I almost gave myself a heart attack looking at the spec sheet, and I noticed max voltage is 48, 36 nominal, max 48. The supply voltage on my router is about 70. And then I realized I printed 800 pages for the wrong drive. For my drive, it's 48 nominal and 70 max. I don't have 48 volts in there. I do have 24, but I don't have that kind of current available. That 70 is going to be close, but I assume as long as I don't let the smoke out, everything should be okay. And I should have a heck of a lot of holding torque. Not long ago, my X-Tech meter gave up the ghost, started getting kind of flaky. And I picked up one of these 117s. I don't have a ton of time on it. Yeah, I don't know how much time you need on a meter, but so far I like it. It's a little more pocket friendly than the Fluke 83. All right, 66 volts. That agrees with the panel meter I installed not that long ago. I just wanted to double check that and make sure I had the right wire pair. 
All right, as the kids are so fond of saying these days, whoop, there it is. Since this motor has all the brains built in, it really couldn't have been any more straightforward. I mean, it's not that much harder with separate drives. There's just a intermediate step and a couple more wires, but it's still the same connections from the control box to the motor. I didn't have a single suitable cable, so I ganged up two of them and electrical taped them together. I've got power run into the green connector. That's the 70 volts we saw down in the box. And then I've got three wires coming through a shielded cable that go to the yellow connector, which are the control signals. Again, those are just one for one, the three terminals that were labeled A on the breakout board in the control box. There's a step signal, a direction signal, and then a signal reference, effectively like a ground. To keep this from going all bucking bronco on me, I'm just gonna snug it up in the vise. I'll be sure to squeeze it hard enough so it loses some steps, of course. The motor itself doesn't seem to have a, any great provisions for strain relief, so I wanna be a little bit careful. Probably strain relief this to the thing I'll build this around. Next step is to fire up the software, tell it that there's a new motor joining the family, and you know, get them talking. Actually, before we do that, I'm just gonna add a little piece of electrical tape Help me keep track of the stepper position. I left a bit of gap in the tape first so I can see what it's doing. And second, I'll probably want to use a tachometer sooner than later. Now, a stepper motor is different than your classic electric motor. When I apply power to this, it's not just going to start spinning. This is a wild oversimplification. And if we do a how to build your own hobby CNC video, we can get more into the details. But when power comes on, the stepper shaft will just lock up. It will lock and maintain that position. It won't actually move until the computer sends a blip in that back end there. Well, it sends two blips, one telling it which direction to move in and one telling it how far. If the computer sends 10 pulses into that step line, this stepper will know to move 10, say, degrees clockwise and then pop and lock in that position. But if the settings in the computer aren't right, weird stuff can happen. If this thing for some reason interprets 10 pulses in the back as 10,000 rotational degrees, like instantaneously, it's gonna try its best to do that. And since it was just sitting here on the router table, that could cause this thing to jump into the sky and knock me out unconscious. Hence the death grip with the vise. This is Mach 4. Steps would be, I think, identical in Mach 3 and probably in any other software that you choose to use for your controller. First step, I'll head into the configure menu, configure mock. In my particular case, there was a step before this for the smooth stepper, but that was already done when I did the fourth axis video. But for now, I'm just gonna go into axis mapping and turn on the third motor, the A axis. After that, it's into the motors tab. Again, I'll activate motor three, and then I need to tune it. Tell Mach 4 what the relationship is between the pulse trains it's sending out and what should happen in the real world. It looks like this carried in information from a previous stepper or from the other steppers, motors zero, one, and two, which are X, Y, and Z. In particular, I'm looking at the counts per unit, the velocity and the acceleration. I'll just leave that as is for now and we'll see what happens. Go into the manual data interface and just tell axis A to turn 360 degrees. I hit the little play button and we'll see what happens. I'll be the first to admit my math skills aren't as sharp as they used to be, and I'll have to look this up, but I've got this sinking feeling that five and a half turns might be more than 360 degrees. What I'm gonna do is go back into the mock menu, the motor tuning, and change that 400 count number to 400 divided by five and a half. Though what I'm really gonna do is check the literature and see what the step count really is for this motor. It probably won't be exactly 400 divided by five and a half, but it should be somewhere around that, somewhere around 72. For those in the know, I'm basically looking for the step count of the motor plus any micro stepping that it might be doing. And that's the number I would put in Mach 4. So it turns out that step per count number is 70.4 something, 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 something. To test that, I've set up a little surface gauge pointed to one edge of the electrical tape. And I've got G code ready to go that should turn this three times in one direction, pause for about three seconds, and then turn back once to where it started. Well, turn back 360 degrees and hopefully it ends up where it started.
All right. Quick update while we're here. Some of you may remember this thing. I've long since replaced this with a wired version, wireless, USB wired. This is Vista CNC, I believe. I don't remember which model number this was, P1A. The difference is just absolutely night and day. I think they cost close to the same price. My gut reaction is just that it's simply the build quality, but it might be the fact that this is wired and this is wireless. Using this thing was good for really gross movements. If you're really trying to get in there and say machine manually or edge find, you'd have to be really careful that you weren't losing pulses. Turning the hand wheel too fast, you know, was always a little bit tricky. This one so far hasn't missed a beat. So I can bring X in. And now I can control my A axis. Hot stuff. So it looks like the control settings are now correct. What I'd like to do now is create a new profile in Mach 4. And instead of defining this as an axis, I'm gonna to try to define it as a spindle. Ideally, I can give it a go command and some RPM and it'll spin up and stay spinning at that RPM. That's something I've never tried to do before. So I think I'm gonna tackle that off camera, but I'll bring you back in just a minute. All right, it's crazy seeing a stepper motor do that. Granted, my definition of crazy is perhaps a bit conservative. Let's see what the tack has to say. Its programmed speed is 1000 RPM. It's clocking in at a little bit more. I'm not exactly sure why that is yet, and I'm not too worried about that, but I did notice something. If I run it in reverse, I get a different number and it sounds different. Not exactly sure why that would happen. Maybe my vice is squeezing a little too tight in one direction. These are the sort of details I can sit around and noodle through. For now, the goal was to get this thing wired in and talking to the machine. Something's being lost in translation, but almost there. Basically, I now feel confident to invest time in this project and use this motor. So I'll do a little more debugging. We'll see this again in its project video. I think this is going to be a really fun build. Hopefully you get a kick out of it. It's going to add like an order of magnitude more capability to my little garage shop here. Most of you may have already guessed what this is going to become, but until then, I'm going to leave you hanging. Until next time, thanks for watching.